Welcome to Dade City First United Methodist Church. I'm Robert Roseberry, the pastor here at this community of faith. And if you're new to our church family, we're glad that you chose to worship with us. Uh, we do have some guest information cards on the table in the entryway. If you miss those as you came in, please raise your hand. One of our ushers uh, and greeters will be happy to get those to you. Uh, we just would love to get to know you a little bit better. If you can fill that form out uh, and put it in the offering plate after you're done, we would love that. And uh, we thank you for being here at our worship service today. Uh, we have a whole lot going on today in church. Uh, there are announcements in your weekly update, and you're welcome to read those and be a part of any of our ministries here at First UMC. But today, uh, we worship God and celebrate with 11 of our youth who have gone through confirmation camp and who are being confirmed today. So we are super excited about that. Uh, this was definitely a group effort, so let me invite Katie Sutton up uh, for some comments. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I may cry. So this is just a warning. Um, I would like to say that I am so honored to be a part of these amazing students' confirmation. Uh, before we get started, though, there are several people I would like to thank, but don't worry, this is not going to take that long. Uh, Dade City's First United Methodist Church Confirmation Camp 2023 would not have happened without two very important people. I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart, Pastor Robert and Heather Roseberry. A round of applause. <laughs> Together, they stayed up tremendously late working on things, making sure everything was in order. Um, and they worked very hard, but most important, they helped me grow as the youth director. So I would like to present this special gift as a thank you from DC for JC. Quinn, if you could grab that present and hand it to Pastor Robert for me. And let's give him another round of applause. Uh, before I move on, we did dedicate a day to just service and giving back. Uh, one of them was the youth went to Enterprise Cemetery and did some work there. But we actually decided to make a prayer garden here on property. And... Um, we decided to make a rock garden. There will be signs soon that will show where everything is and what to do. Um, but it's just a spot for you to go and to pray. And if there's some rocks that you can pick up and either trade rocks or um, if you want to write uh, your favorite Bible verse or in memory or in honor of someone and leave it there at the garden. Uh, and the students and I decided to name it in memory of Brent Sutton. So it is the Brent Sutton Prayer Garden. And there's actually some rocks from Moffat Cancer Center that are there as well. So, so go ahead and give the uh, kids another round of applause. I can't believe I've had this opportunity to help the understanding Miriam, rambunctious Kyle, the intelligent Isaiah, courageous Owen, thoughtful Miles, endearing Nolan, lovely, lovely Leah, Talented Olin, creative Adrian, considerate Lauren, and the comic Quinn get confirmed as a member of the Dade City's First United Methodist Church. We as a whole would like to thank all the sponsors, staff, families, and friends for taking your time out of your busy schedules to help these outstanding groups of middle and high school students through this process. It fills my heart with gratitude knowing that we have such a strong support here at First United Methodist Church to make something like this happen. So now, let the show begin. First, whoa, whoa, whoa don't, don't stay up here, Katie. Katie. So I'd like to thank you for being a part of this too. And so thank you so much for all of your wonderful work during confirmation. I'm happy to be with you. And when we first sat down and talked about this idea of doing confirmation camp as a five-day, 9 to 5.30 uh, day camp, I don't think that um, we tried to explain it, but I don't think Katie quite knew what she was getting into. Um, and uh, thankful she stuck around. With all the crazy things we've had happen this year, I'm super excited that Katie got everything pulled together, got all the stuff wrapped up, and we had a wonderful, wonderful camp. Um, I think the kids had fun, right, guys? Okay, that means yes. So uh, we're super happy to be a part of this uh, with all the kids. 
and um, just it's a really, really great place. We're thankful to have all of you here. Uh, as we celebrate new commitments to Jesus that will be made in the lives of our youth today, I don't want to pass up this opportunity to, without telling you that all we do here as we worship is to call attention to what it means to believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so if this Sunday's worship inspires you to commit your life to Christ, we would love to know and would love to help you get that journey up and running. Even if you're a little too old for another confirmation camp, uh, we want you to know that Jesus loves you no matter what, and that a relationship with Christ can make life infinitely more worthwhile and eternal. So as we celebrate with our youth and we uh, enjoy God's love for us, let's stand and sing our first hymn, Stand As You're Able. Um, we, as we welcome the light of the risen Christ into our worship, we'll sing number 57, O Four Thousand Tongues to Sing, verses 1 through 5, uh, a hymn that was written for the anniversary day of Charles Wesley's conversion. may be seated. Moving into our time of prayer today, we will of course be praying for new relationships with Christ that start today, officially anyway, as our candidates are confirmed and baptized. Uh, we began confirmation camp with the image of a mustard seed. And today in worship, we'll read from that parable that Jesus taught as we meditate on what it means to grow the kingdom of God in your life. So let's open our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and our Bibles as we worship today and celebrate growth in God's new creation. We invite you to take the weekly update that you received as you came in and uh, take that prayer list that's on that weekly update and pray for these names throughout the week. If you'd like to submit a prayer request to the church office, there's a gray two-sided prayer request card on the pew back in front of you. You can fill that out and put it in the offering plate, or you can also email the church office. And as we enter our time of prayer this morning, would you join me in hearing the words from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Today, as the third Sunday in June, is usually recognized as Father's Day. And our pastoral prayer today will be giving thanks for our fathers in whatever form they come. Would you please join me in prayer? Loving God, we lift this day our gratitude for the loving men who have brought us the precious heart of your father love. 
for those who have shown us kindness, for those who have shown us courage, for those who have shown us generosity, for those who have shown us truth, for those who have shown us compassion, for those who have shown us faith, and for those who have shown us love. Blessed be the name of all sons and brothers and fathers who reveal a glimpse of your loving presence on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for every son, brother, father, and grandfather who has suffered and endured. We lift a stone from the stream bed of living waters to the forehead of men and boys in our lives, touching each forehead with a sign of your healing for every broken heart hidden from view, for every secret shame buried in darkness, for every untold story of regret and alienation. We touch with this stone the brow of every man who has suffered for those he loved. We touch with this stone the forehead of our ancestral fathers who sacrificed their very lives, inviting you to heal the wars and woes and wickedness within, inviting your everlasting peace that the world might know your peace. Hear our prayer, O God, as we pray for peace this Father's Day in our broken world. We pray for wisdom and equity in the hearts and minds of those who lead us, for justice with mercy that seeks equitable access to all the earth has to offer, for passion and power in our churches to influence public policy for good, for a new day when justice will roll down like waters across this land, for the revelation of Father love that never leaves nor forsakes. And we lift your hope of healing for all sons, brothers, fathers, and grandfathers who live in mystery as your creation, who are entrusted with the life and struggles of manhood. May they grow in father love to your glory. Hear our prayer, O God. We pray for peace this Father's Day. And we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you please stand as you're able, our next hymn speaks of the blessed assurance we have as children of God. Would you turn your hymnals to number 369? We'll sing all the verses. Thank you. 
be seated. I'll now invite our ushers to come forward as we receive our morning offering. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, magnificent, sustaining farmer of the future, receive these gifts today, we pray. Through our offering, help us to know in some surprising way that you are bringing into being something wonderful and new. Amen. Be seated. of celebrating new commitments to Christ with 11 youths. Specifically during this service, we will be confirming four, baptizing one. Confirmation and baptism of our youth is one of the most important things we do as a church together. As youth grow up, they make choices about who they are and also whose they are. It is crucial that they receive guidance and support with a Christian perspective from their church family to guide them in the way of Christ. 
During this time of worship, our youth will be claiming the name Christian for themselves, confirming their own baptismal vows, and joining the professing membership of Dade City First United Methodist Church. We're so happy they're here today with their families and sponsors to take this bold step of faith. Let me call out the names of our confirmands for this service and invite their sponsors and families up to stand next to their banners here at the front. Adrian Lopez, Miles Carter, Owen Carter, Lauren Cook, and Quinn Cosentino. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty act of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? I'll ask for your answer on the uh, pamphlets that you should have gotten when you walked in. Did everybody get one? I'm sorry. Anybody not get one? All right, wonderful. So let's start that again. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? That's good. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include those who come forward today in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Nolan, Owen, Miles, Lauren, Quinn, Isaiah, Miriam, Leah, Olin, Adrian, and Kyle with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the old and new, the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in the God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. Enjoy us, the quick and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we ask God's blessing on the waters of baptism as we prepare these new Christians to join the family of faith. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow, light shining through water to remind us that you would never again destroy the world in a flood. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the waters of the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan River to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a mother's womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who will receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father.
Adrian, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? Doug, will you who sponsor Adrian support and encourage him in his Christian life? I will. Will you all, as a community of faith, build up Adrian and help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. Adrian Alejandro, I baptize you in the name of the Father. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You're welcome to lay hands on Adrian as we pray together. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, Adrian, will you stand and turn and face the congregation? We welcome our new brother in Christ. <laughs> Let us join together in the words of welcome found on your handouts. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. You're welcome to go back to the banner, I think. Or if there's not enough room... You can figure it out. There's enough room. There's always enough room. I now call forward Miles Patrick Carter, his family and sponsor to the altar rail. I present Miles. Miles, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world. David, will you who sponsor Miles support and encourage him in his Christian life? Will you all, as a community of faith, build up Miles and help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Miles Patrick, remember your baptism and be thankful. You're welcome to join me in laying hands on Miles. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand and face your church family. Let us welcome our new brother in Christ. In your baptism, you were incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. By your personal confirmation of the baptismal covenant today, you have accepted this faith as your own. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. I now call forward Owen Patrick Carter, his family and sponsor to the altar rail. Owen, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, 
Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? Austin, will you who sponsor Owen support and encourage him in his Christian life? Congregation, will you as a community of faith build up Owen and help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Yeah. Owen Becker, remember your baptism and be thankful. You may, you may use your hands. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. You can stand and Turn to your church family. Let's welcome our new brother in Christ. In your baptism, you were incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. In your personal confirmation of the baptismal covenant today, you have accepted this faith as your own. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. Congratulations. I now call forward Lauren Elizabeth Cook, her family and sponsor to the altar rail. I present Lauren for confirmation. Lauren, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Nina, will you who sponsor Lauren support and encourage her in her Christian life? I will. Will you all, as a community of faith, build up Lauren and help her cultivate her faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. Lauren Elizabeth, remember your baptism and be thankful. You may lay hands as we pray for Elizabeth, for Lauren. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Stand and face your new church family. Let us welcome our new sister in Christ. In your baptism, you were incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation with joy and Christ's royal priesthood. In your personal confirmation of the baptismal covenant today, you have accepted this faith as your own. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. Congratulations. I now call forward Quinn Scott Cosentino, his family and sponsor to the altar rail. I present Quinn for confirmation. Quinn, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, Will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? Michelle, will you who sponsor Quinn support and encourage him in his Christian life? Will you all, as a community of faith, build up Quinn and support him and cultivate his, help him cultivate his faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Quinn Scott, remember your baptism and be thankful. Would you join me, please? May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Let us welcome our new brother in Christ. In your baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. In your personal confirmation of the baptismal covenant today, you have accepted this faith as your own. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you and members of the family of Christ. Amen. All right, so I'm going to turn and face all of our confirmands. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If you will, say we will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Members of the household of God, I commend Nolan, Owen, Miles, Lauren, Quinn, Isaiah, Miriam, Leah, Olin, Adrian, and Kyle. Whew, that's a lot. Yay. To your love and care, do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. All right. Congratulations, guys. You did it. And uh, we thank you for being a part of this. This has really been a wonderful week. We can't say that enough. And we're really proud of these kids and all that they have um, accomplished and all they've realized that God has done in their life, too. We are so happy about that. Our scripture reading today is from the fourth chapter of Mark, verses 30 to 32. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, which is the version um, that they have, that they got in their Confirmation Bibles. Uh, So if they have their Confirmation Bibles with them, if they don't, that's fine. But if they do, they can turn to it. There you go, Owen. All right, he brought his. Um, Turn to Mark chapter 4, verses 30 to 32. As we said in Confirmation Camp, once you find the page, call it out. No, you don't have to do that. Everybody's got different page numbers. And Jesus said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. As I mentioned before, at the beginning of confirmation camp, we gave each confirmand uh, a mustard seed, and we had them tape it to the outside of their confirmation binders. I'm going to get in trouble if I call it a notebook. They are binders. We said binders and Bibles probably 500 times during confirmation camp. It was meant to give them an image of themselves, that even with a faith that is young, they don't have to have everything figured out. God can still do amazing things as that mustard seed is planted in the earth. And God can grow them from where they are. We know, and we knew then, and we certainly know now, that there are a million things we wish we had taught them during confirmation camp. We wish we could have said. But in the end, it is God that provides that growth. And we know that we pray that we are giving all of these confirmands. And in confirmands, you have been given the tools to begin that growth process or continue that growth process. And in this parable, we often focus on the mustard seed, but the true image, really, that Jesus is giving, both in this passage and the one before it, which also talks about the sower going out into his field, the image is really that the seed is planted in the ground. That's why it's the growth. The mustard seed is the mustard seed. But the miracle happens 
when it is planted in the ground. The tiny seed becomes the great bush offering protection to the birds. And that, that image of, of the, the protection to the birds and the, the tree shading the ground is found in the prophetic literature in the Old Testament where um, the prophets see this great flowering tree coming up and providing shade and shelter for the birds. Now, a mustard plant does not actually grow branches and provide shade like a tree, but Jesus is connecting that small, tiny seed and God's miraculous growth to sprout that tiny thing into something miraculous. And is as in that parable, God's kingdom is compared to this transformative and productive earth into which we put our meager offerings of faith the tiny little grain, full of doubts, full of questions, full of a need for further maturity, not complete but begging for new growth, and the kingdom of God is what gives the growth so that the mustard seed can become all that it was meant to be. So much more beautiful and larger than it would seem from the size of that tiny little seed. And you all sitting in the pews and those of you who will be watching this online later to continue your worship, you all are the soil. As these little mustard seeds are planted in the ground in this church family, it is our great privilege to provide the shelter. Because as soon as that seed is planted in the ground, there's some bird overhead that's going to go, great, I get a little meal, right? And we're here to cover that seed and provide the protection and the the nutrients and the water that it needs to start sprouting. That by the time it pokes its head above the ground, the birds don't bother it anymore. And that, that mustard seed has what it needs to begin that growth process to spread its roots out. To gather all the nutrients that it needs for life through the church family. And then it can do what mustard does. And let's be honest, mustard's a weed. It doesn't just grow for itself, it takes over a garden quicker than a hungry man chasing after dinner. It's a bush that spreads, it even grows in places you would never expect. It's one of those crack of the sidewalk kind of plants. It grows everywhere through everything in just about any environment. If it had a little tag pot like they do at Lowe's, it would just say, just stick it in the ground, it'll be fine. That's what it would say. Wild mustard can grow almost anywhere. Maybe not an ice cap. Maybe. But nothing can stop it. May it be so with those of us who sow our mustard seeds in the fertile soil of God's kingdom. May it be so For all who come searching for Jesus and find themselves planted in a community that can help them take that tiny little meager grain of a seed and grow it into something beautiful. May it be so. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for new beginnings, for new commitments, for new life, for the waters of baptism that your grace is imbued with, showered upon a precious soul of God, a precious creation of God. We thank you for all of these many blessings. And we pray that as these mustard seeds are planted in the soil of this church family, that you from above would shower them with sunlight, with rain, and with the nutrients that they need to grow, and that you would help us be an environment where they can spread roots and grow into a tall and strong plant so that they might spread invasively their faith throughout all of creation. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next hymn, if you'd please stand as you're able, is number 374 in your hymnals. We are singing what we're all doing here today, Standing on the Promises.
I'd like to invite the Cook family up. I'm sorry, you guys just sat down. I did say you could be seated. I apologize for that. That was my fault. You already joined, Lauren. It's your parents' turn. (laughs) So you just saw Lauren and Christina and Jeff come up and join our church family, or come and help Lauren join our church family. And we decided today would be a good day for them to join our church family too. So I'd like to... Uh, Christina and Jeff are parents of Lauren, one of our confirmands. Uh, they are tra- Christina is transferring her membership from Hyde Park UMC in Tampa. Jeff is transferring his membership from Palmasia Methodist Church in Tampa. So I have some questions as you join our church family. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? in whatever forms they present themselves. That was a dramatic thing. Can you do that after every (laughs) one? Sorry. That was good, Dale, even even if it was accident. Where am I? All these are familiar, right? You've heard these before. Okay. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? don't know how to do it without the organ now. (laughs) As members of Christ's universal church, will will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Members of the household of God, I invite you to take out your pamphlets again, and we will say these words of welcome that we already said to our confirmands as they joined First United Methodist Church, beginning with, we give thanks for all that God has already given us. Would you join me as we welcome these new members of our church family? We give thanks for all that God has already given us, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We do receive this benediction as we prepare to take our worship outside of these doors with a lot of nice new folks added to our family. May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, may this God establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace, generosity, love, and peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Congratulations.